Hi, I'm Nick Carborn with the Whiskey Gents, and we are live here in London at the Hedonism Wine Store in Mayfair. I'm joined with Luke and Chris. Luke, can you explain a little bit about yourself? Of course. Um, I'm a wine and spirits expert here at Hedonism Wines, um, and we specialize in the fine and rare, but we, we have everything. Um, we stock over 2,500 whiskeys, uh, 11,000 products in total, um, and that ranges anything from your yeah, 40 pound bottle to your 123,000 pound bottle for Janet Sheed Roberts. Um, today we're going to be tasting some, we pulled out the big guns. Um, we're tasting an Arbeg 17, um, which is a discontinued line. Um, we're tasting the Downwell Constellation 1972. Um, and then we're going to be finishing off with a little bit of Downwell Aurora, which was a 45 year old that they released back in 2010. Um, that doesn't exist. Like, <laughs> there is none of it on the planet. I couldn't. I was trying to find some for sale today, but none. So we're going to be tasting some pretty awesome whiskies. And Chris, cool. can you please introduce yourself? Christopher Beckon. Uh, I run a blog called Beckson.com where we sort of we specialise in the finer things in life, such as what. Uh, fine watches and liquid gold, as I like to put it. <laughs> the finest liquid gold. The finest <laughs> liquid gold ever. So I love that. Yeah. So what will we start this off with? Like what's our kind of transition whiskey to get into this? Um, well, I mean you brought some big guns here, so we, I'm we kind of like, big guns. I was gonna say um, that is a good I'm point. not really sure where to start. <laughs> <laughs> I mean what we're gonna do, we're actually going to start with um, the Arbeg 17, although it is the a peated malt, um, it is a lower level of peat than you would normally expect with Ardbeg. Um, the 17 is a really, really interesting whiskey. Um, to give you a bit of history behind it, um, Ardbeg basically closed down um, in 1981. Um, basically 99% of what they were producing was for blended malts. Um, and when the style of blended malts um, changed and people didn't want as much peat, um, they stopped buying Ardbeg as a main component. So Ardbeg lost 99% of um, their business and effectively went bankrupt. Um, so were they completely mothballed at the time and um, basically no, just stopped was, producing it, or was it in very small quantities? They kept producing just very small Well actually yeah, you're, you're, you're uh, quite spirit. right. I mean, in, so they stopped production between um, 1981 and I think it was about 1990 mm -hmm. um, and then they, they produced um, a small part, a really, really small amount um, from 1990 to 1996, um, which was then bought by Glen Morangi um, PLC, um, which in turn then released the Arbeg 17, which was the revival of the Arbeg distillery. Right, okay. Um, cool. But obviously they weren't distilling for that length of time, so the Arbeg 17 is actually made up of all of the malts that they still had in stock mm -hmm. pre-1981. Oh, wow. So you've actually, although it says 17 on the label, it's there's probably... quite a lot. I, I couldn't malt. resist. I already had to open it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to give it a smell. You're getting me really excited here. So. Yeah, I, I, it's I, cheeky, I've, very I've cheeky. Always, I mean, I'm, I'm a big Arbeg fan. Big Isla fan. Huge Arbeg um, fan. Yeah. So the the 17, I have never tried. And oh wow! I'm so this is the first for you then. Seriously pumped to try it. Yeah. So I've never tried this yeah. either. I'm not sure about yourself. I've never tried it. No. Okay. So okay. this is the first time awesome. for all of us getting into the 17, which is um, really cool. I think we, one of the the interesting things about it is the lower level of peat. Um, so the the current 10 year old is petered up to 52 parts per million, okay. um, which is a pretty high level. Um, this is going to be li less than half of that. Oh, really? I, I, and I was thinking about so it it's going to be quite subtle then? It's going to be quite a yeah, nice subtle Yeah, it's going to be a more base. subtle, subtle style of Ardbeg. Um, I think, you know what, I was trying to think about why it's a lower level and mm -hmm. I think because that, that that shift in consumer taste was moving away from peat, I think tried Ardbeg, to... we're trying to, trying to draw it back a little yep. bit and ultimately, you know, Oh, not enough apparently. I think now though even with like the way that the consumers are buying it's just like you know the peat has almost become a novelty as well so the yeah. higher they can raise the peat it's just kind of like that yeah. intensity like let's just pack as much as we can. Yeah, and, yeah. So, mean, yeah. but it doesn't completely work like that though does it because I, mean, I know you can get obviously a whiskey day or they say oh you know it's crazy ppm level so maybe like I don't know 200 ppms and it's not exactly so basically what they say is not exactly what the flavor you're going to be getting it, it, you know there's, yeah. a, there's a kind of like a there's a trade-off in regards I, to how it works i think you know that that good example of that is a brook laddie Octomore. yeah you know that the, the first release of the Octomore was peated to the idea behind it was to make the world's peatiest whiskey um yeah it's just over there and the first release i think was about 320 ppm Jesus. which is which is <laughs> completely bonkers um but it didn't come across quite i, I think there's a limit you reach that yeah. it, you know it's but I mean, the current Oxmoor is around about, um, I think it's around about 180 ppm, which is still obviously 
three times as much, over three times as much as the current R Big Ten. Yeah. So yeah. it is pretty peaty. But as I say, this is going to be okay. A, uh, Looking forward to this. I really am. Yeah, this is going to be cool. Show me Richard Patterson this and just throw it to the floor. <laughs> yeah, go on. For yeah. a day. Maybe if we're going to the Dalmore, that's where we should yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Slanch. Slanch. Cheers. Oh, wow. I mean, I've tried a few older distillations, like um, uh, 74 single cast from our bag, and what always strikes me is the lower level of peat. And I think when Isla malts have that length of time in the barrel, the peat doesn't become the core element. Yeah. What you end up guessing so is sweet. more more fruit is, coming through. This is very, very yeah, fruity. It's absolutely. like pears and... I remember trying the... Oh, this is very fruity. Well, it's like citrus, not, not, yeah. not too citrusy, but basically there's almost like a sort of, you know, pears and apples and those kind of fruits and yeah, peaches yeah, yeah. and apricots. You get that kind of sort of really light Pear drop. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like 100%. those uh, boiled sweets you used to get. Yep. Um, that's exactly what I'm getting. And you, I think the saltiness comes through on that, you know, that, that sort of mm. seaweedy. Um, obviously, that's the iodine coming through, but it's not a key. It, you component. don't get that intensity that no. you're getting from no. new ones at all. No. Which is just so subtle. I mean, I think this is this is a um, 43, is it? No, 40%. 40%. 40. So it's yeah. so light yeah. compared to what they're putting out yeah. now. Yeah. So. I mean, the only. I mean, because what's, what's their sort of standard uh, ABV? 46. 40, 46. 46. Yeah. Okay, um, so 43 would have been quite low for And them, then so definitely. their other ones are in the 50s, low 50s ish, high tech. Yeah, you've got, you know, the Ugadar, which is uh, 50, uh, 53, 54, and then you've got the Cory Beckham, which is more, is up to over 60. Okay. Um, so that would definitely a little a few drops of water. Yeah, just, just yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I mean, you rounds it up a bit more. It's, nice. it, it's always down to personal taste. And, yeah, you know they it, it, distilleries release a whiskey if it's not cast strength, and they that that is the that is the ABV that they think the whiskey warrants. Mm. So obviously that's how they think it should be drunk. But obviously everything is down to personal taste. So if you feel like adding a little bit of water, add a little bit of water. That's the thing, though. Is that I think there's a lot of whiskies out there that basically you taste them and you think to yourself, right, okay, this tastes good but i think maybe just a few drops of water yeah it does it taste yeah. but that's why but i love then, buying the higher percentage whiskeys is that yeah. you just get so much more out of them yeah. exactly you know <laughs> there's also that there's and the that's advantage why i can't like when, when i go to like the the new balvinis that come out and they're selling them at 40 percent whereas like i just know i'm not going to be able to get yeah. my full no, you can't stretch it as much yeah yeah so. but then sometimes you get you'll get like a really you know high abv uh, whiskey and then basically you add a bit of water to it and mm -hmm. it just doesn't take the water very well it just basically either heightens a part of it that's really mm -hmm. bad yeah and, um, it's, it's, and it obviously it kind of unbalances the dram it's also the amount of water like it literally sometimes is drop. two or three <laughs> drops yeah. i mean you're talking you know per pet amounts like yeah we're talking yeah boom 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 and just you changes know. it drops and, and it and it changes no i think people don't think about the evolution of whiskey in the glass yeah, like it, it does change. You know, know like, like a wine, it it opens up in the glass. That's why you decant. You know, and I don't think people think about that. You know, how it changes. Now. I mean, this it's, has changed already since yeah. the since you pulled it out and just to to now. This has changed. It's gone to a more sort of creamy sort Ooh. of custody. I haven't even had a sip yet. <laughs> no, I know. I'm getting like loads of vanilla now. We haven't even tried this yet. Yeah, yeah we haven't tried yeah, it, yeah, but yeah. we're gonna try it. Oh, the dynamic is just changing like crazy. So let's go in there and try this. This is really good. I was going to say, I mean, really elegance isn't good. normally a word you associate with. But Arbe. this is really elegant because yeah. it's, it's, it's a really nice sort of. It's like oh. summer fruits. It's like fruity, but I'm getting like there's like yeah. chocolate, like oh yeah, there's a little bit of chocolate, and then there's that kind of salty <laughs> flavor, and then there's this, you, you it's said like you said salty earlier there's salty caramel. caramel. Yeah, yeah, that sort of salty caramel. caramel. That, that is we're it. talking about Old Pulteney. Yeah, um, it, you know, it's not a million miles away. I mean, obviously, Old Pulteney is much more about the seaside character rather than the iodine it's unpeated yeah, but yeah. it's got that sort of saltiness to it as well but i also think that this is um it's 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 got so much more um depth yeah. in regards to what i'm sort of used to from our big now yeah and you can taste that this has got so much yeah. more behind it i mean this is this is an old distillation i mean we're talking it's got to be stock which was distilled before 1981 mm. so 
I'm absolutely going to be part of this, which was distilled in the 1970s. And the ways, you know, distillation methods were different. Um, also, the, you know, the wood that they were using um, was not, they weren't finishing off whiskies in, yeah. you know, first fill sherry barrels or anything like that. Yeah. So you're not going to get like the, the, the richness that you find in something like the Yugodal yeah. or the 10 year old. Yeah. Um, this is going to be probably second, third fill sherry cask so and it's yeah. not going to have that it's more about the malt and the distillation yeah for rather sure. than I the, the totally effect of the, from this yeah. whiskey like i know for sure there's a nice chocolate flavor in there by the way dark i'm chocolate. loving that it's, <laughs> so it's like dark chocolate salt mm. caramel and, and summer fruits i just feel like and... i'm eating chocolates right now <laughs> but actually i'm not willing to say that the chocolate is that dark i'd no. say it almost milk chocolate yeah. Uh, really yeah i think on okay. the nose like that creamy milk i'm chocolate making nose. sort of like yeah. milk chocolate like there's a And it just keeps opening up too. Yeah, and you can it does. tell the, on the palate the, the the texture is is that of an old distillation because it has that oiliness to it. Yeah. Um, we were talking about it earlier when you know the the comparison between a Glenmorangie, you know, it's distilled in the fifties and sixties and seventies compared to modern day, and it's it's that inconsistencies. It's the fatty lactic acids that you get in it, which you don't really find nowadays. Um, now, do yeah. I dare add a little water to this? Yeah, well, I, I, I was, I was going to say, who's going who's to be the first to add a <laughs> tiny bit of water? I think I'm, I'm just going to go <laughs> with, I'm, I'm <laughs> slightly so scared as well. good already. Yeah. This, this whiskey is so incredible. I, I can let you take the first plunge with this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All I'm hoping is that maybe <laughs> yeah, sort of yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll test this. So I'm going to um, do two drops. Okay. Because I think that's a pretty good amount just to kind of get this started yep um this will change it quite a lot I should hopefully bring more of the fruit out i'm guessing i'm guessing i'm getting a lot more of the chocolate actually oh, oh really no, i'm gonna have to try now one time okay i'm gonna start with like coffee. deeper richer chocolate now with just that little hint yes Ooh. It's, it's it's got a lovely sort of i know it sounds strange to say it sometimes but it kind of that's the kind of thing that i can think of when it when it does hit me um it's like a sort of like wet tobacco but like a really nice Ooh. sort of yeah good cigar that's just kind of like it's come out of the year yeah. it's been going and it's a very mild and it's been yeah it's, it's got that wet tobacco I mean, yeah it, in terms of that's, like a, <laughs> that's like a perfect analogy for this wet tobacco yeah i yes. like that um you know it I'm trying to think of like the modern equivalent to this. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in the Arbeg range, there was the Blazda, which was the really low level of peat addition. Right. Um, it wasn't my favourite, <laughs> um, but this. I mean, this is this something completely different. Um, it's very unfortunately, special. Discontinued. Um, this was they they stopped this they stopped the release of this about eight years ago. However, you can still buy this. <laughs> However, this store. So however. if this is something you're into, <coughs> yeah. you can come here and find this. And how much? Uh, how much are we talking? Is 485 um, <laughs> taxes and duty included. And if you're um, if you're a huge art big fan like myself, yeah. you know I think that's yeah. something you need to have in a collection for sure. But if you're overseas, you happily know that we do ship overseas as well. We'll take the tax off. Um, that would be great for us Canadians. Yeah, so. <laughs> a little bit of a tricky <laughs> tricky that's going you know, to Vancouver, but. Um, yeah, uh, we you know we ship. I mean, the 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 market for whiskeys now oh. is is international. Yeah, it's um, huge. We're shipping daily to the US. Um, the Asia we do, but it's it, it's difficult with the import again. But um, this is a this is a whiskey lovers whiskey. It's there to be drunk. Mm. Um, yeah, this is something I could sip on for an hour or so. For I could sure. I could easily sip on this. The only different what would happen though is that my wife would say definitely do not kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's fine with me. I'll just have some more. It's, it's like one of those like it's, oh, it's such a subtle peat to it as well. But wow, what a great whiskey! Mm. I know. And again, even with that, just that touch of water, it's it's given it so much more. Yeah, yeah, the tiniest mm. amount. It's given it a lovely creamy mouthfeel as well. It's just kind of really opened it up, and that kind of you kind of get that. Um, you know, when obviously when you have like a you know really dark chocolate, and it's, let's say probably talking about what ninety percent cocoa, and you get that really sort of slight gritty. Yeah, yeah. feeling right at the end, it's kind of like it's bordering yeah. on that. It's getting there. I love it's that. getting it's, there. It's that texture that you're talking about, which I just is so difficult to find in 
modern day distillations. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's you know you can find it occasionally. We were talking about Springbank earlier. I think they no, do. No, but I have I have I have not experienced a whiskey that's on this. Uh, I can't describe this oh, level. This of, is really good. I'm also getting like a vegetal character now. I don't yeah. know. Really. Um, but I think that lends, lends itself to what you're talking about, tobacco. Yes. Um, I think it probably, yeah, yeah. because I've I've gotten that sort of, there's a crossover between that sort of vegetation mm. sort of flavor and the tobacco, and when you get there, it's kind of like, yeah, I don't know just, exactly what you mean. The, the strongest note to this, though, is that chocolate and caramel, which yep. is just, mm. you know, I just love that. It's funny, because that kind of salty flavor has kind of dissipated a little bit with a, with a touch of water. Yeah. It's kind of gone. Yeah. And it's more... Like you said, yeah, rich it opens chocolate. up the fruit. Yeah, it opens up the fruit, um, opens up no, the chocolate. I completely agree with that. And it's, um, and, but strange enough, we've been tasting this the whole time and we've yet to mention peat or smoke That's very or true. any um, of those kind of qualities that you would expect. You know, you know, and maybe associate. that has to do with being so kind of just adjusted to the Octomores and like yeah. more heavily yeah. peated art bags. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I don't get that strong peatiness, mm. but it's still there. I, I don't know, I can't describe this. It's just so nice. It is good. <laughs> it is good. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's like, again, I've, I've found it with old distillations occasionally, is that almost like oatiness. You can, okay. you, you can, you can almost, you, you can smell the barley. Yeah. Um, I think, I, for me, I get that on the nose more now. Um, oh. See, what I always like to do is like a little back of the hand trick where you... Oh, yeah, yeah. And that kind of, that gives you that sort of... That gives you the pure. Yeah. Just rub it a bit. That's what they do in the distiller, isn't it? And that's when you get the old. Oh, that's, you're and, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's when you get the that natural is, whiskey. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That real bready. Yeah, that real bready that. sort of. It smells like um, oh. rorts, doesn't it? Yes. It smells like <laughs> the, the, the the proper the, the old school stuff in the yeah, mash tun. Exactly. That's um, what it smells I love like. That. Um, and that actually is actually a good tester for sort of, you know. Telling how good and how good the quality of a whiskey is, which is yeah. quite nice. I always find just grabbing at it, and yeah. you can say, okay, that the whiskey still tastes really or still smells really good, so it must be good quality whiskey to begin with. Absolutely, and I think yeah, that's no, obviously, think that's you know, yeah, that's very important. If you've got good whiskey to start with, the rest of it hopefully should fall into place. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave mine in a little bit in the glass there and just see how it come back to it later. Yeah, and absolutely. And so I would. I, 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 I was going to say, I kind, I kind of would. We might, we might be able to find you a little bit more at the end. Don't worry. I would, but uh, yeah, I think I've got like one last mouthful. Okay. All right. I might well, have a, a little bit of water in between. Yeah. In between courses. Absolutely. Mm. Have you got some? Even that last yeah. drop was just beautiful. Perfect. Thank you.